One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. heading here. A few weeks back I did an intermediate level lesson I called the Banjo Land Special which was basically an original composition I played over a 12 bar blues progression and it got some good response and I had a request from someone if I could do a beginner version of the same song so the same format a 12 bar blues but more something that a beginner could tackle. So I've written up another original arrangement. This one I called the Banjo Land Twist after my hero and uh, an ode to my hero, Bill Monroe, the father of bluegrass. He had a great instrumental called the Bluegrass Twist. So I called this one the Banjo Land Twist as a little ode to him. It's a 12 bar blues in the key of A. We got our capo on the second fret. So we're gonna be playing in the key of G, but it's gonna sound like the key of A. And it's just gonna be a similar format to the other lesson I did, but it's gonna be more geared towards beginner. So simpler right hand patterns, simpler left hand patterns. I'm gonna break down both solos note for note and then show you a bunch of back, basic backup I would do on a song like this. And if you're watching the preview of this lesson, you can head over to my website, mikeheadingmusic.com and grab the full length lesson. You'll get access to watch all the videos and you can download the tabs and the practice tracks. All right, here's the Banjo Land Twist in the key of A. All right, let's start breaking down the Banjo Land Twist. So let me play the first five measures and then we'll start breaking it down. Here we go. few times. One more time, real slow. One. Okay, so we're going to start with measure one, which is our pickup. And we're gonna, beat one is gonna be a rest, and then we're gonna play on, on beat two, the open fourth string, and then our second finger of our left hand on the second fret of the fourth string, and then open third string. So we're using our thumb of our right hand three times in a row, three quarter notes, so don't rush through those, so it's one, two, three, four. Let's do that a few times, not too hard, one. One more time, one. So not too hard, just a classic bluegrass pickup. And then we're gonna get up to measure two. We're gonna put our second finger on the third fret of the third string. And we're gonna do kind of like an inside roll, that's what I would call it. We're gonna hit our index finger of our right hand on the second string, and then go forward, T-I-M. So we have. And it's kind of like a chromatic lick. I almost think of this as like a, I was thinking kind of like a jug band sound. Um, that kind of sound where we're playing with those those half steps that kind of idea and the only difference is we're doing is instead of grabbing those two notes on the same string we're grabbing that fourth fret oh that's the open second string and then we're kind of making it more of a banjo roll like a scruggs roll see how we're, instead of doing it single string now we're doing so same notes, so we just hit the index finger on the open second string, and then you roll forward, T-I-M, with this finger down. And make sure you're getting all those notes to be really even with your right hand. And then we're gonna slide your second finger down to the second fret and do a two, three slide, T-I-T-M, three, two, five, one are my strings. So we have looping measure two for a second. So that's our opening melody line. And then measure three, we're gonna do a three, two pull off on the third string. 
So not too hard there. A 3-2 pull off on the third string. Thumb, index, third string, second string are my strings. And I'm going to get three notes. So it's one E and. So unlike that slide where we were lining up the, the notes. So that's eighth note slide, right? Three and four and three and. Now in measure three, we're getting three notes. One E and, one E and. So you actually do the pull off before you play your index finger. And then I'm gonna go down to the second fret of the fourth string and do thumb, middle, fourth string, first string. And then open third string. And then pinch the outside strings. So let's do measure three on its own. that pull off a bunch so let me give you a couple options if you're having trouble with that pull off so one you could just take out the pull off and play it open so it'd sound like this so that'd be one idea would be just to take it out the other idea is you could play like the second fret so you can practice it that way get the timing down make sure you're doing the right hand correctly the other thing you could do is play just the right hand of two and three on its own. And then add the left hand back. So not too hard, but I'd practice that pull off. If you've played banjo, you're going to use pull offs all the time. So the other thing I'm doing is I'm kind of falling backwards you got to get your second finger down to the second fret pretty quick. I like pulling back toward my palm rather than pushing. I like pulling. And then measure four is basically the same opening melody line again, just a slight variation. So we start with that same chromatic lick. And then right here, we're just going to do a hammer on instead of a slide. You could do a slide, but I just mix it up a little bit, do a hammer on. So your first finger's there. Make sure you keep your first finger down and you're not doing this back and forth. So when I do my hammer on. Resist the urge to lift that first finger up. See how much more work that is when I do it that way? Whereas if I keep this finger down, now I can just, I, all I have to do is lift on and off my second finger. So you have. So not too hard. Now. After that lick, you're going to take your second finger, go down to the third fret of the fourth string, play that note. So that's a quarter note, one. And then you're going to go up and do two forward rolls, five, three, one, T-I-M, thumb index middle. So make sure you give beat one a quarter note. So we're using our thumb twice in a row there. We're going thumb, and then thumb index middle, thumb. So using your thumb twice in a row at the beginning of measure five actually helps you play that pause. a G7 chord that's going to set us up going into our C. So again, we have four measures of G to start it so that we don't count the pickup in our backup or in the lead, right? We're, the lead starts in measure two. So we have four measures of G and then we're going to go into our C. So that fourth measure, again, really measure five, but excluding the pickup, it's the fourth measure of the solo. That's a G7 that's going to set us up to go into our C chord. Okay, let's play the first five measure and then we'll keep moving on. Here we go. One. The other thing I'm doing with this song is I'm adding a little bit of a swing feel. So rather than playing the notes really straight, I'm adding kind of that, that long, short, short, long kind of swing feel. I think of it as the, the hi-hat that's how I remember the feel. But again, it works really good with that alternating thumb roll, two, three slide. That's a good way you can hear the, the, the groove that we're, we're adding. So it's. Rather than. So again, 
sense. It adds that little pulse, and that's why I added a little drum track to this practice track with a little swing feel so you can practice that. Getting the swing element of the solo is a big part of it. So again, you have... Sometimes they also call swing like playing with a bounce, so you can think of it that way too. And if you're just struggling to get the notes down at first, don't worry too much about the feel. But that is the, the final element, the final piece to the puzzle, is you want to get that, that groove, that swing feel to the song. That's really going to help you bring out the, the solo. Okay, let's do measures one through five one more time. Here we go. One. along with the practice tracks and just try and get it to sound like how I'm doing it.